All right. Um, hi, everyone. Thanks again um, for taking the time to join us today to learn more about the GSMA Innovation Fund for Climate Resilience and Adaptation. Um, as you may already know, the fund has opened and we are readily accepting applications um, until May 16th. Um, so this, uh, the purpose of this webinar, which I will go through a little bit later, is essentially to provide some more information about the fund, uh, the eligibility and the scope. Um, so thank you again, again for joining. Um, moving on to the next slide. Uh, this initiative would really not have been possible without the backing and support from the Foreign Commonwealth and Development Office, as well as CETA, who are our donors for this innovation fund round. Um, and without further ado, I think we'll kick off. I will briefly turn on my camera to say hello. Um, hello, everyone. My name is Nafisa Punjani. I'm a senior manager with the GSMA Innovation Fund, um, and I will be moderating this session for the next uh, for the next hour or so. Um, so thanks again. I'm gonna go ahead and turn off my camera uh, just to conserve bandwidth. Before we go ahead and get started, um, there are just a few housekeeping reminders. We've disabled the camera and mic features for participants just to make sure that we can serve bandwidth. Um, so please feel free to type in a question into the chat panel at any time during the webinar. Um, and we will do our best to respond to them kind of on a rolling basis. However, there'll also be a, a dedicated 20 minutes or so at the end of the webinar to answering your questions and clarifying application processes and requirements. Um, following. Sorry. Um, if you would like to see live captions during the webinar, you can enable this function by going to more. Um, just the three dots, um, as you'll see per the screenshot, um, and turning on live captions as highlighted. Uh, just a few, um, just a quick reminder on, on the agenda, or I'd like to go through the agenda with you for the next hour. The objective of today's webinar is to provide further information, as I said earlier, on the terms and conditions of the fund that will really as that will really support you as as you work on your applications. Um, we'll begin by sharing some information about the GSMA and the Innovation Fund program. We'll then spend some time covering essential details to include in your application, and we will also cover eligibility of the fund the application process and the support that is available through uh, through the fund. And at the end, you will have a chance to ask ask us any questions that might be on your mind or um, or that may have been unclear during the course of today's session. I'd like to now hand over to Philippe Belloltre, um, who's the head of operations um, for the GSMA, as well as the head of the GSMA Innovation Fund. So over to you, Philippe. Thank you, Anafisa, and hi, everyone, and welcome to, to everyone. I see that there are already more than 160 attendees, for, so many thanks for attending this webinar. So I'm going to give you a brief overview of the GSMA and the Innovation Fund, so to give basically, uh, to, to, uh, to provide an introduction about who we are. So first of all, um, the GSMA. So the GSMA is the association that represents the worldwide mobile telecommunication industry. So our members are mobile operators, but we have also associate members from the wider telecommunication and adjacent industry. And our goal is really to unlock the power of connectivity so that people, businesses, industry and society uh, thrive. So that's uh, the goal of the GSMA. So if we can go to the next slide. Um, so within GSMA, we have, uh, let's say, a, a department, uh, which is the uh, GSMA Mobile for Development. 
So the role of uh, Mobile for Development, or M4D, is to use donor funds, such as, uh, we we'll discuss later, FCDO and SIDA, to launch projects leveraging mobile technology. That's very um, clear and at the center of what we do to solve issues that impacts uh, the most vulnerable in the world, and especially in low and middle income countries, such as digital financial inclusion, gender gap, uh, climate challenge, amongst others. So here you can see uh, different donors that we are working or worked in the past, as well as some M uh, mobile operators that we, again, were, we, we are working with. They are just examples, obviously, and we work with uh, a lot more mobile operators. So if we can go to the next slide. So the GSM Innovation Fund, what it is. So the GSM Innovation Fund, in essence, provides grant funding and support to organizations uh, and especially start startups and SMEs that leverage mobile technology to solve social, economic and climate ability challenge. So the, the Innovation Fund has three objectives. Uh, uh, De-risk innovation, first of all. Uh, uh, second of all, is support local entrepreneurs on the path to scale and commercial sustainability. That's very important. Our goal is not just to give uh, uh, money and then, uh, okay, you fly on your own. That doesn't work like that. It's really our purpose is really to uh, to uh, to uh, to be with you on 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 the path to scale and sustainability. And 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 in particular, we provide you. We are going to provide you as much as we can with connection and partnership with mobile operators because we. I think they are key on this road to scale, and we are going to facilitate connections with different investors that uh, we hope could be part of your journey. And uh, we are going, and the goal is to profile as well uh, the entrepreneurs while our grantees, and, and obviously extra, extract learnings uh, for industries, uh, insights, and, uh, and advocacy. So it's a big, uh, uh, it's a big part of uh, of uh, enfin, the innovation fund is at the center of what we uh, GSMA uh, do. And obviously, grantees will have the chance to participate to our worldwide event, such as the Mobile World Congress and other GSMA organized uh, events. If we can go to the next slide. Uh, I was talking about scale, so to give you an example uh, over since we have started the Innovation Fund in 2014, probably, so uh, some, some years ago, uh, the donors uh, uh, who funds us uh, put on the table more than 22 uh, million pounds and the startup uh, who basically were granted in our portfolio, portfolio sorry, raised 29 times more than the original uh, amount that the donors, grant, uh, the donors provided. We therefore mean it's a huge, it's a big scaling story that we, that we are very proud of. So obviously, uh, uh, just to be very clear and transparent, doesn't mean that all grantees that we funded uh, has been successful, that would be a lie. Obviously, some failed, some were fine, and some really are very fine. But that's the, basically the, 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 the purpose of the portfolio effect. But we are very proud that we have been part of a scaling journey for a lot of our uh, uh, startup. And you can see on the right hand side, typically uh, the example of investors that have uh, invested, uh, commercially invested in this startup since uh, 2013 or 14. We can go to the next slide and I nearly finished the, uh, nearly finish my presentation. So to give you a sense of the type uh, of innovation fund, so we launched the innovation fund on the round on the round basis. So typically you are here today for the climate resilience and adaptation 2.0. Uh, but in the past, we launched different innovation funds with different topics. So to give uh, uh, an idea, the, the ones currently which are still active are uh, digital urban services. We have the climate adaptation and adapt climate resilience and adaptation 1.0. Uh, as well is currently in flight. Uh, the anticipatory humanitarian action is currently on the due diligence phase. So we have a lot of uh, uh, competing and uh, active innovation fund uh, at, the, at the same time. Uh, and uh, we, we have some very good results. And, and especially for this um, new round, Climate, Adapt Climate Resilience and Adaptation 2.0, we really hope to build a lot of bridges with the current cohort of climate resilience and adaptation and, and share, and hopefully they will share good lessons and learnings to you guys. 
And I guess the two final slides, if you can go to the next one, I just wanted to give you a sense of the grantees that we have uh, giving that we have given grants since 2020, so it's only from 2020 uh, onwards. So you can see that uh, in Africa we have provided the grantee on a different, I mean, uh, very widely. Fine, sorry, um, we in a lot of geographical uh, areas in a lot of countries, and uh, you can see as well the breadth of uh, uh, of areas. Uh, like agriculture, aquaculture, and so on, that we have provided a, a grant tour. And same thing for Asia. So you can see that our Asia story since 2020, it was uh, not the case before, has been very focused on South Asia. Uh, we are extremely keen to do much more in Southeast Asia slash the Pacific. So uh, that's a call for everyone, which is in the call always in this region, in these regions. Uh, yes, please do not hesitate to apply. We are very keen to uh, uh, do much more in this um, in these two regions, Southeast Asia and Pacific. So I, I guess that's that's that is finished for me. Uh, and I guess I will give the floor to Anna and Samir, who are going to uh, to uh, to give you the much more uh, specificity about uh, this new round. Thank you, Philippe. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Anna, Senior Insights Manager from the Climate Tech Programme. It's amazing to see so many of you here to learn about the Innovation Fund. Um, in the next part of the webinar, we'll be talking through some more details of this specific fund, which builds on our previous one, also looking at climate resilience and adaptation. So you'll hear from a few of us, including Samir, who is the Climate Monitoring, Evaluation and Learning Manager, and Akanksha, who is head of the Climate Tech and Digital Utilities programmes. So we'll get started by watching a video which provides an overview of this round. Climate change and biodiversity deterioration are among the most pressing challenges facing the world and the need for innovative solutions and collective action to address climate change is urgent. Low and middle income countries in particular are the least prepared for climate shocks and will continue to be impacted the most. Mobile technologies and other digital solutions can help create a more resilient future where communities can adapt, anticipate and absorb climate shocks. Are you a startup, SME or social enterprise based in Africa, South and Southeast Asia, Pacific Islands, the Caribbean, Latin America or Eastern Europe? Are you leveraging digital technology to deliver climate resilience and adaptation solutions with socio-economic, environmental and commercial impact to low-income and vulnerable populations, especially women? Are you helping individuals and communities to adapt to long-term and future climate change risks, including frequent and extreme events such as drought, flooding, high winds, wildfire, high risks of landslides and erosion? Are you making a positive impact on the environment or biodiversity? We would prioritize applications on nature-based solutions and sustainable consumption and production. We can support you to launch new products, services and business models, scale up existing products and services and facilitate strategic partnerships. We provide grant funding from 100,000 and 250,000 pounds to support projects over 15 to 18 months requiring 25 or 50% match funding plus tailored technical assistance, including mentoring and expert advice, networking and showcasing opportunities, facilitating relevant partnerships and monitoring and evaluation support. Find out more and apply now at gsma.com forward slash climate fund. Perfect. Okay, so that was an overview of the parameters of this fund. 
And next, Samir is going to talk through some of the key concepts and our particular sectors of interest. Hello, I'm Samir. Um, next slide, please. So as you can tell from the title of the fund and from the terms and conditions, uh, this fund is for mobile and digital solutions that build resilience to the impacts of climate change rather than solutions seeking to mitigate climate change by reducing emissions. So what do we mean by climate resilience? A climate resilient solution can be defined as one that helps communities to anticipate, plan and prepare for climate shocks, adapt to ongoing and evolving climate stresses, and absorb and mitigate risks that arise from the impact of climate change. So examples of actions that build climate resilience by strengthening capacity to anticipate climate shocks include improving access to and use of weather and climate information, supporting disaster preparedness and early warning systems. Examples of actions that build climate resilience by strengthening capacity to adapt to ongoing climate stresses include changing farming, forestry and fishing practices to an evolving climate pattern or diversifying economic and livelihood options. Examples of actions that build climate resilience by strengthening capacity to absorb climate shocks include improving economic stability and reducing financial risks or building defences to withstand climate shocks. So building resilience to climate impact um, is sometimes linked to climate change mitigation, but the goal is very different. Actions that aim to mitigate climate change are tackling root causes linked to emissions. Examples of mitigation activities include reducing greenhouse gas emissions or capturing, sequestering and storing carbon. So GSMA will consider all mobile and digital solutions which build resilience to climate change. Um, if you could just press the next button on the slide, please. Uh, solutions which integrate both resilience and mitigation measures are also within scope and GSMA will consider them too. However, solutions which focus exclusively on climate change mitigation are out of scope for the fund and will not be considered. Next slide, please. So as mentioned, the GSMA Inf Innovation Fund for Climate Resilience and Adaptation is open to all mobile and digital solutions that are building climate resilience. However, we will be specifically prioritising projects that help us to build an evidence base and gather learning on the following thematic areas. So firstly, mobile and digital climate resilience solutions that target vulnerable populations and or ecosystems in coastal areas, small island states or urban settings. Secondly, mobile and digital solutions that tackle challenges posed by increasingly frequent um, extreme weather events such as droughts, floods, high winds, wildfires, etc. Um, thirdly, nature-based solutions um, to climate resilience that use mobile and digital technology, specifically regenerative agriculture, sustainable forestry or coastal and wetland ecosystem conservation and management. And then lastly, mobile and digital uh, climate resilience solutions that focus on sustainable consumption and production, specifically reducing food loss and waste, improving sustainability and biodiversity of fisheries and managing air pollution. So if your project falls into one of these categories, that is great. If not, we will still very much appreciate uh, receiving your application and we encourage you to apply. This is not a list of eligibility. This is just a list of which areas we are keen to explore more through the fund. Next slide, please. To help you understand what we are looking for from the priority areas, here are a few examples of nature based solutions. So regenerative agriculture solutions might include improving local biodiversity and soil quality, predictive advisory for pest and disease management, agri advisory and practices such as crop rotation and no till systems, and eco friendly fertilizers. Sustainable forestry solutions might include monitoring and mapping tree cover and health using GIS and remote sensing, sustainably, forest, sustainably harvesting forest products and using blockchain technology for traceability of source produce, empowering communities whose livelihoods depend on forest ecosystems. 
And then coastal and wetland ecosystem solutions might include restoring coastal and wetland habitats by means such as planting mangrove seeds, using drones, stabilizing shores and coastal erosion, surveying mapping and monitoring underwater coastal habitats. Next slide, please. And here are a few examples of sustainable consumption and production solutions. So solutions that help to reduce food loss and waste might include solar cold storage of fresh produce, supply chain and distribution efficiency, access to markets to buy and sell fresh produce. Sustainable and biodiverse fishery solutions might include precision aquaculture and fishery management, forecasting diseases and predicting harvest times using artificial intelligence, or sustainably farming fish and using blockchain for traceability of source produce. And then lastly, solutions that focus on air pollution management might include air quality and data monitoring, advisory services on air quality management, and changing attitudes and behaviours towards air pollution. So these are examples of what we might be looking for in the priority thematic areas. But again, as mentioned, uh, we welcome applications that are tackling resilience in many different ways, not just in the priority thematic areas. Um, so over to you, Anna. Thanks, Samir. So I'm now going to share some tips for what we're looking for in the applications and key components that we would encourage you to consider for your submission to make it as strong and as relevant as possible. So firstly, looking at um, target users, in your application, we're looking to understand from you who exactly is going to use and benefit from your solution. We ask that you explain why this population is considered vulnerable, you know, what kind of risks that they are um, exposed to. If you can provide as much information as possible in terms of where they're based, what climate risks they are prone to, the specifics that make them vulnerable, all of this helps us to better understand the community itself, but also why you're working to support them and what impact the Innovation Fund grant could actually achieve by working with you. Given that we're also interested in solutions that are having a positive impact on diversity, um, if you're looking at a specific ecosystem and if your project is focusing on this in particular, so say, you know, coastal or wetlands, please share details of both the ecosystem um, that you're looking to have an impact on, as well as how it improves the lives of the community. In all the cases, if you can provide as much evidence as possible, whether that is from work that you've done within your project and organisation, or from external sources, it will just help us to better understand the context in which you're operating, and the specific climate challenges that your target users are facing and how your solution actually addresses it. Next, let's look at impact. So in the application, what we're looking for from you is an understanding of how the community is specifically impacted by the climate risks and again, how the solution addresses it. So we have a particular interest in the socioeconomic and environmental angles and understanding what the change would look like in practice with your project. We ask that you clearly link this to the three A's so that when you're describing your project, we can understand whether it's helping communities to anticipate the challenges, adapt to them or absorb specific climate risks and what it looks like in practice. It helps if you are able to explain, for example, the severity or time sensitivity of the climate risks, um, you know, whether it's happening now, something that the community faces on a seasonal, um, it, like on a seasonal basis, or whether you're helping a community to prepare for anticipated shocks or stresses that may come in a few years. When we talk about vulnerability, we also know that there are lots of other factors at play. So it's helpful if you can provide details of the you know, social, systemic or political reasons that can either compound the challenge or may influence your solution. 
Um, this could range from you know, digital literacy through to security challenges. As I mentioned before, so we're really interested in clear and tangible evidence. And in your proposal, we ask that you outline how you plan to capture the impact of your solution on the target population or the environment. You can um, support this with existing evidence that you might have, for example, the current users, the success to date of your project, as well as the targets under the Innovation Fund grant. It's worth noting that all successful grantees are provided support on measurement and learning, um, so we would help you with this um, if you were to become a successful grantee. Finally, let's look at technology. The fund is looking to support projects where really mobile and digital solutions are at the heart of the intervention. So when you are preparing your application, please explain what specific technology you're proposing to use and how it helps the target community. We are keen to understand whether mobile or digital tech is a small part of the project, if it's central to it, and also details of the infrastructure or legislation that could impact. So for example, if you were using drones, do you need a license? Does equipment need to be imported? If the community is using the technology directly, it's helpful for us to understand whether it's free, is it in the local language, is technology access concentrated amongst certain members of the community? All these details just help us to better understand your specific proposal. We have a particular interest in the use of new or kind of innovative frontier tech. So if that's relevant to your submission, please provide details on the application of this frontier tech within your project, as well as the extent to which it has been tested and applied within your specific context. Just finally, a note on partnerships. So within the Innovation Fund, we're keen to catalyze mutually beneficial part partnerships. And within your submission, we ask you to outline the value proposition of working with a mobile network operator. You don't need to have a partnership already in place, but in the proposal, we ask that you outline the potential benefits that you could bring to a mobile operator. And similarly, from your perspective, what you'd be seeking from potential partnerships. So I'll pause there and I'm going to pass back to Nafisa. Uh, thanks so much, Anna. So for the next couple of slides, we will go through grantee support um, and eligibility. So the support um, that's provided to grantees that are awarded uh, funding is um, is of course much more than the hundred thousand to two hundred fifty thousand um, over the fifteen to eighteen months of project implementation. Some of the other benefits or support that you provide or that we would um, provide would also include during the lifetime of the grant. Um, Grantees will have opportunities to network and share learnings with other startups in their cohort and more broadly with other grantees within our existing portfolio. And this would be done through the participation uh, at GSMA events and through GSMA Innovation Fund led boot camps. We would also provide monitoring and evaluation support to be able to help measure impact and effectively communicate your solutions impact as well as support you with final reporting or financial reporting uh, through our fund manager. In addition to that, um, we understand that partnerships are one of the many pathways to scale solutions. So through the support that we offer, we will also help facilitate connections between grantees and mobile network operators, as well as public sector organizations where relevant, um, and of course, as well to investors as well. And last but not least, grantees are invited to participate at GSMA Global Events through their Mobile World Congress series, 
where you will have the opportunity to increase your organization's visibility and profile among industry experts, investors, and through uh, the various GSMA publications that we put out throughout the year. In terms of eligibility, um, the fund is open to for-profit organizations, include small and growing enterprises and startups that leverage mobile and digital technology to pilot or scale solutions that help communities to build resilience towards the impact of climate change. <clears throat> We require organizations to have active users as well as commercial revenues, um, and that can be users and revenues from any product or service offered by your organization and at least one eligible country, as well as organizations that can demonstrate the long-term scalability and sustainability of the innovation beyond the grant funding period. Next slide, please. The regions of focus that we are looking at include Africa, South and Southeast Asia, Pacific Islands, the Caribbean, Bolivia, Colombia and Guatemala, um, and regions and uh, Albania and Moldova specifically. So we encourage you to refer to section five of the terms and conditions, which can be linked um, to the chat as well during the course of this webinar. Um, and we encourage you to review the countries that are eligible to receive official development assistance um, and to check that the country of implementation for your project are both within the above region, so within the geographical scope and are included in the official list. And what we'll do is we'll link both um, both the terms and conditions and the official development assistance list um, to make it easier for you to double check um, that uh, that your country is uh, of implementation is is eligible. I also wanted to flag here that there are countries where the GSMA cannot distribute payments to and these projects uh, and projects in these countries are unfortunately um, ineligible to receive funding and that's listed at the bottom of the slide. Another consideration for eligibility um, is that the fund requires a matching contribution from the applicant to demonstrate both interest and trust from the wider investor community. So applicants must provide a match funding contribution of 25 or 50% based on the grant amount that you are requesting for. Um, match funding will need to be evidenced and validated before shortlisted candidate proposals are reviewed um, and deliberated by the funding panel. So we strongly encourage uh, female founded and female led organizations to apply um, or organizations that have a good strong representation of women at all levels of the company. Applicants who have a strong presence in their country of implementation, as well as show a commitment to both supporting and upskilling um, the promotion of, of local staff. Applicants who already have partnerships with relevant local stakeholders, so these can be community based organizations to deliver the project on the ground and projects and projects and applicants who have a clear understanding of how their solution improves the resilience and adaptive capacity of vulnerable communities and perhaps have may already set have set targets um, and know how or are already measuring the impact of their solution on uh, the wider community. Uh, we also are looking for applicants that have not already received prior UK aid or CETA funding through the previous GSMA innovation fund rounds. Uh, and finally, these are the key milestones or key dates um, that we wanted uh, you to be aware of. 
Um, as you may know, the deadline for applications is on May 16th, and that'll be through the screen door portal. Applications that are emailed, unfortunately, will not be accepted or reviewed. Between June and September 2023, shortlisted applicants will be required to submit a formal proposal outlining the specifics of their solution and how the grant and match funding budget will be allocated. Um, I also wanted to highlight that during this time frame, we will be in parallel conducting due diligence on the project as and will include areas such as um, structure of the organization, its governments, internal controls of the organization and financial management systems as key areas uh, of our due diligence review. The fund panel will be reviewing and deliberating during the course of October um, to appraise your proposals based on your final submission, as well as um, reviewing the recommendation from the GSMA team and the fund manager. And should you be awarded a grant, project implementation is expected to begin in early 2024. So at this stage, we'd like to open up uh, the webinar for any questions from the participants. Um, please do use the chat function to type your question and we'll direct it to the appropriate team member. Um, I've seen a couple of questions already on the chat as to whether uh, this webinar will be um, will be recorded and shared. It is being recorded um, and the slides will be shared as well on the website shortly after after today's webinar. Um, Leo, do you want to um, to sort of help us uh, direct us to some of the questions, common questions, perhaps? Yeah, yeah. So thanks, Nafisa. Um, I'm Leo. I'm in the question fund. So we've been trying to answer some of the questions, but I'll try and go through some of the ones that have not been answered yet. So just give me a second. So um, there's a question on uh, uh, match funding. So what sort of match funding uh, do we need to bring this question from Anna? Take that up. Yeah, sure. So I can take that. So match funding is both um, in kind and um, and in, in the form of um, cash investment. Um, so in terms of cash, this can include funding from cash reserves, um, crowdfunding, impact investment, and, um, and from grants. Um, in, for in-kind contributions, this can be, um, for example, use of, of goods and services and facilities such as a software perhaps, or provision and access to equipment or, or technical assistance. Um, I would encourage you to go through um, section nine of the terms and conditions, um, which has further detail on, on the match funding contribution, um, as well as um, as well as the thresholds for both in-kind and uh, versus cash match funding. Thanks. Uh, there are a couple of questions on uh, mobile network operators. So from Afriza, so who is uh, a mobile network operator? Do you have any specific criteria for it? Um, and is the applicant required to have cooperation? And I think that means partnership with an MNO. Sure, sorry, I'm just trying to scroll to the question. So um, it is encouraged. Um, OK, let me restart that. So what we look for in terms of um, mobile operator partnership is we're not asking that you necessarily have, you know, a signed, a ready to go partnership 
already in place at the time of the grant. Um, we can certainly help support this or further support um, you know, the conversations that you may have already started uh, before the grant. But what we are looking for is a strong value proposition, um, you know, for, for a partnership with a mobile operator. Um, a follow-up is, um, uh, could you share some examples of partnerships with mobile operators? Sorry, you, you cut out. Could you say that again? Yeah, so could you share some examples of partnerships with mobile operators? Sure, so we've had um, several, as uh, we've supported several grantees uh, with partnerships. This can, this ranges, so this can include um, partnerships, let's say on, um, on the, on agent rollout. So, um, so using, um, for example, or leveraging mobile operator um, agent networks to help scale your solution. This can also include uh, mobile money integration, IoT, um, IoT connectivity, as an example. Um, so we've seen several, several pathways or several levels of partnership, whether it's on the marketing or commercial side um, versus integrations as well. Uh, thanks for that. Uh, there's another question on do you only support for profit organizations um so that has already been answered uh, by martin our colleague um and then there's a question on how do you define an sme i've provided uh, an answer there uh the next one is for uh, ruth um must technology uh, must the technology already be built and in use? Sure. Um, so here we would like to see some kind of traction um, on on the type of technology that you are suggesting. I guess it would be I guess it would be um, interesting to hear a little bit more about the type of technology that you are thinking about before being able to provide you with with a concrete answer on that. I think I would need a little bit more information. Okay, thanks, Nafisa. Um, Hazik, uh, Ibrahim, uh, do we need a community that we've worked with or um, <coughs> we could be introduced to, um, sorry, I don't get that, but something about uh, working with uh, local communities, and I think it's community-based organizations. Um, any comments there, Nafisa? So I'm gonna pass this on to um, to perhaps Akanksha. I'm not sure if the question is, do you need to have a community that you're already working with? Or if it's that, um, if it's, if it's that you have a community in mind, but you're not already working with them. Perhaps uh, perhaps before I hand over to Akanksha, um, maybe that uh, the person with the question can further clarify and we'll do our best to respond. Okay. Uh, the next one is um, our company is based in UK. However, we have active team members in Indonesia. Uh, and we have not registered as a company yet, are we eligible to apply? Do we sure. want to hand that to Shantini or take that up? Sure. Uh, Shantini, are you, are you available to answer? Um, okay, so while we wait for Shantini to unmute, so uh, section three of the eligibility of the fund um, says that uh, you have to be an existing en entity registered and operating in the country of project implementation at the time of application. Um, and in cases where responsibility for service delivery lies with a downstream partner, um, 
it may be acceptable for the applicant to be registered in a country other than that of the project implementation. So it would really depend on whether you, um, whether your organization would be doing the implementation, and if so, you would need to be registered in the com in the country of implementation um, ahead of uh, at the time of application. Um, so another one is um, from Florian. Um, can a startup that previously received a GSMA grant apply again with a different solution alone or with partners? Um, I can take that one, Afisa. So if you've completed a, a grant in the past, um, you're still eligible to apply. However, uh, preference will be given to applicants that um, have not received grant funding uh, before. So if you've received grant funding in the past, you just need to show a very clear additionality of um, the new project or the new grant uh, funding that you are applying for. Um, I'll move to something else. Um, there's a lot of questions on match funding, so Nafis has already dealt with that. And there's a clear section on the terms and conditions. Um, scrolling. Uh, is it required for companies to have fewer than 250 employees to be eligible for this fund? Yes, so yeah. our definition of um, of a startup, um, so small and growing enterprise um, and and a social enterprise with up to 250 employees that have significant potential and ambition for growth. So that's our, our definition of um, small and growing enterprise. OK. Um... There are two questions on eligibility, company eligibility. So are nonprofits eligible as long as they have a product with a revenue stream? And how strict are we with the with for profits? Sorry, uh, I cut out. Um, I wasn't able to hear the question. Could you please repeat? Yeah, so are nonprofits eligible as long as they have a product with a revenue stream? Um, and how strict is the restriction to for profits? I'm not sure I understand the second. Uh, the second part of that question. But um, non-governmental organizations are not eligible to apply for funding. Yeah, I think that answers the second part. Um, the other question is, we are planning to apply in collaboration with a company that has already received uh, this grant previously. Uh, the project will be different, though um, will be different. Uh, however, will it reduce our chances to obtain the grant? Sorry, they've already received funding from the GSMA? So they, um, they're planning to partner with a company that has already received the grant, uh, GSMA grants before. So I think if the lead applicant hasn't, um, hasn't already received funding from the GSMA, um, they would still they would still have a strong chance, um, you know, of course, based on meeting the other criteria as well as the strength of their application. OK, um, I'm just scrolling. Um, another similar question on uh, donor funding. So we have obtained uh, funding support through a donor that is being funded 
by CEDA for a project that we're launching in Indonesia. Uh, the project with this donor is about to end this month. Uh, now we want to submit to GSMA for a completely different program. Um, how, however, does our status make us ineligible to apply? No, not at all. You would still be eligible to apply. Um, you'll see as you fill in the application, there is a disclosure where you would need to indicate that you have received um, previous donor funding from CETA in this case. Um, but again, as long as you're this, you know, the strength of your application and your solution, um, and of course, the eligibility criteria are met um, there, you would still have um, you would still have a good chance. OK, um, another question from Vikash is, uh, can you please elaborate on direct climate mitigation solutions aren't eligible for for this funding? So maybe um, Kangsha or somebody. I, uh, I I've responded to that question in the comments, but um, like I was going through in the slides earlier, so this fund is open to solutions which are looking to build climate resilience um, of people. So helping people to prepare and plan for climate shocks and stresses, helping them to adapt to any um, evolving climate stresses or helping them to absorb and mitigate any risks that uh, come from the impacts of climate change. We are not looking for solutions that are um, tackling climate change itself. So anything that's uh, focusing solely on reducing greenhouse gas emissions um, will not be considered unless there is a strong resilience component. If there is a solution, if your solution is looking to reduce greenhouse gas emissions and it is also um, supporting communities to adapt, prepare for or cope with any of the uh, challenges that they are being faced with um, arisen from climate change, then they will be eligible. But any solution that is just looking to um, reduce greenhouse gas emissions, um, for example, um, uh, capturing or storing carbon and not building that resilience of any individual, they will not be considered. So that's what we mean, separating the resilience versus uh, mitigation. Uh, resilience is considered, uh, mitigation will be considered if there is a resilience component to that solution as well. Thanks, Amir. So I'm, I'm going to jump a few questions uh, focused on um, country of registration. Sorry, I think we lost Leo. Um, perhaps um, someone from the Climate Tech team can answer uh, the question from Pat on, can the application focus only on solutions around anticipation? I will take that question then. Um, yes, they will be welcome to um, submit a pitch for any solution that focuses on um, supporting communities to uh, plan, prepare for, anticipate climate shocks and stresses. We would like to really see how that solution is targeting a specific community or a specific context, um, what that um, climate um, threat is that they are um, um, being uh, prepared for, or anticipating, um, and then what mobile and digital technology is being used. So that's what we are looking for. Um, we're not looking for early warning systems, however. So if this anticipation is um, involving early warning systems, um, that would not be um, the focus of this fund.
All right. Um, I'm conscious of time, but I think we can still probably take um, one quick question. There was a question on um, from someone that had just completed a grant from the U.S. State Department, um, and the question was, would they still be eligible to apply? So um, I answered this question previously, but essentially you would still be eligible to apply. You would just need to disclose um, you know, who you received the grant from um, and other details that are in the application form um, as part of the disclosure um, that you've already received grant funding. Um, I recognize that there are several more questions that we haven't had a chance to answer yet. Um, we're pleased with all the enthusiasm and the questions coming in, as well as the uh, the number of participants that we've had join us today. So thank you so much for your time. Um, we unfortunately are at the at the top of the hour, but we will do our best to respond to questions. Um, you know, after this. Uh, please be reminded that the terms and conditions and frequently asked questions can be found on the application landing page. A recording of, of this webinar again will be posted on the web page as well, and the FAQs will be updated with the questions and answers that we've covered today. And for any further questions, please feel free to contact us using the email address that's listed on the slide, and we will do our best to respond. Uh, to respond to those questions in a timely way. Thank you very much again um, for joining us, for spending your time with us, and we look forward to receiving your applications by May 16th.